So if someone listening is thinking, okay, I'm interested. The next big question from your sources was which type? Mm -hmm. Because just magnesium isn't specific enough, is it? Not at all. This is where it gets really interesting, actually. The form of magnesium makes a huge difference in how well your body absorbs it and where it goes. Right. Bioavailability and all that. Exactly. So let's break down four types that came up in your materials, focusing on anxiety. First, there's magnesium glycinate. You could think of this as kind of the gentle, calming one. Okay, why gentle? Well, it's known for being easier on the stomach than some other forms, but the key thing is it combines magnesium with glycine. Glycine itself is an amino acid known for its calming effects on the nervous system. So the combo might boost relaxation, maybe improve sleep quality. Ah, so the glycine adds an extra calming punch. Makes sense. Good for sensitive systems too. Generally, yes. Then you've got magnesium torate. Taurate. Okay, what's the story there? This one combines magnesium with another amino acid, chorine. Taurine has some interesting properties, anti-inflammatory, neuroprotective. And relevant here, taurine seems to promote GABA production. GABA, the calming neurotransmitter. The very one. So the idea is this combo might enhance that calming effect. Your sources mention animal studies showing it might reduce fear and stress responses. Animal studies, though. So promising, but needs more human research. Exactly. We need more human trials specifically on anxiety for magnesium taurate. Now, next up is magnesium L-threonate. This one's pretty unique. Oh yeah, how so? Its claim to fame is its ability to cross the blood-brain barrier more effectively than many other forms. Like a VIP pass for the brain. That's a great way to put it. It gets magnesium levels up in the brain, and once it's there, it seems to interact with receptors involved in mood, cognition, and the stress response. So potentially more targeted for brain-related effects like anxiety. That's the thinking. Animal studies showed reduced anxiety and better cognitive function. And importantly, there is human data. A 2022 study you shared looked at older adults. Those taking 1.5 to 2 grams daily reported significant drops in anxiety symptoms after 12 weeks. 12 weeks, okay, that's a decent time frame. And significant results, that's compelling. It really is. Finally, let's touch on magnesium chloride. Chloride, is that just a standard one or? or... It's actually absorbed quite well by the body. And the research your sources included suggests it can help with relaxation, sleep, and even symptoms of depression and anxiety. Any specific studies? Yeah, a couple stood out. One from 2017 found 248 milligrams daily, significantly improved both depression and anxiety symptoms in people with depression. Another study looked at people with fibromyalgia. Just 100 milligrams daily for a month helped reduce their pain and stress levels. So, another viable, well-absorbed option with some good data behind it. Correct. Different forms, different potential advantages. Okay, we've covered the why the bodies need and the 